Hello, my name is Smab, and for the first Mystery Tuesday, we are going to review Genshin Impact to find out if the game is inspired by Breath of the Wild or if it's a blatant ripoff of it. So, I hope this video will help clear that up. <laughs> so, the game itself was developed by MiHoYo. Today, MiHoYo has made a total of four games that I'm aware of. Genshin Impact, which came out 11 days ago, Hanukkah Impact 3rd, which came out in 2016, Collapse, Ga Collapse Gakuen in 2012, and Gun Girls, Guns Girls Z, Mirage Cabin, which I could not find a date on. Now, <clears throat> Genshin Impact itself is a free-to-play action role-playing game made by and published by MiHoYo themselves. The game has a, a fantasy-based open world with some gacha mechanics and is available on PlayStation, personal computer, Android, and for those of you not exactly aware of what gacha means, basically got their about gacha mechanics are put into video games and various other things and basically they're think of kind of like the uh, claw machines you'd find at arcades but your items are random every single time these tend to come with free-to-play mobile games where the mechanics end up serving as an incentive to make you spend your real world money <clears throat> but as most of you are aware this has changed thanks to certain greedy companies Now, for the things that this game has in common with Breath of the Breath, uh, Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild, is that you can literally climb almost anything in the game, excluding the dungeons. Well, certain parts of said dungeons, but you need to make sure that you actually have the stamina so that you can keep going and climbing. The second thing in Genshin <coughs> that has that an the second thing that Genshin has in common with Breath of the Wild is cooking, but unlike Breath of the Wild, Genshin has you do a mini-game to see how well you actually manage to cook the food, if you can really call it a mini-game. It's kind of too easy to really be a mini-game. And the third thing they have in common is a pretty big open world. And that, and also that, if you want to access the part of the map so that you can actually see the world, you have to visit a shrine in Genshin and a tower in Breath of the Wild. The uh, fourth thing that came up with climbing is Stanima, as well as orbs, which you can find out in the world and bring back to the shrines to increase your stamina. <sighs> And that's really about all that I can really remember that they have in common as I've been playing the game for 24 plus hours and this is about all I've been able to find so far. Now, the differences between them is that is one, how they manage to handle their weapons. In Breath of the Wild, your weapons break and they break way too easily. This system gets completely replaced in Genshin as it's got a rarity system and the weapons don't break. The best you can get is a 5 star, but you can also upgrade them from a lowly 1 from a lowly 1 star to a level 5 star by yourself. As long as you have the appropriate adventurer level and the materials. It also has multiple playable characters. Genshin has quite a number of them that you can find in a few missions that the game decides to give you, though this is rather a rarity. So far in the game, I've only come across it where it does that for you four times. The majority of my characters end up coming from the gotcha system I mentioned earlier. Now, when I mentioned the gotcha system, I also stated that it's real world money, but you can play this entire game and not have to spend a dime because it gives you its sub currency rather often, and the price to use the gotcha system is only 160 of this secondary currency. Which you can get in like an hour or so of playing the game. 
Now, another thing that differs wildly is the story. This game, unlike, unlike Breath of the Wild, has to be completed by gaining adventurer ranks, which I just mentioned. And once you get past adventurer rank 16, it becomes a rather tedious grind, and you're gonna have to get those adventurer ranks if you want to keep going with the story. My friend Gaiman can tell you all about that. The conclu to conclude this with the six points both for and against this game being like Breath of the Wild is that I'd have to say that though they are similar, this game tends to be its seems to be its own beast and should not be called a clone nor an imposter of Breath of the Wild. Instead, it ends up taking parts of Breath of the Wild and adding it to itself to make itself a whole brand new game. And in my humble opinion, it's honestly worth your time as long as you can play play the game in decent periods and the fact that you can also play it without spending any money on it. Legitimately, for a free game, that's kind of rare. So, as I have to declare to this, for this game, whether it's inspired by Breath of the Wild or not, well, it's clearly just inspired by it. And... It's rather fun, nonetheless. Like I stated, I've played 24 plus hours. Even did a bit of co-op. My friend can tell you about the co-op. But... I hope you enjoyed this video for what it is, which is me spouting about what's different from it compared to the wild. Now, if you want to talk to if you want to watch somebody who talks specifically about its flaws, I suggest you check out my friend Gaming King's channel that I have put in the description and can also be found in my channels tab. But if I were to, say, give this game a score, I'd have to say it's 6 out of 10. It's an above-average game. And if you've got the large amount of spare time to put into it, I'd say it's worth it. But with that said, I hope you all have a great day and have an even greater week. Because this is Smab, and I'm signing off. See ya.